Hello, Loveland Magazine. This is Cassie Mattia, and today I am the food guru. And where are we? Well, we're at the Works Loveland, right in the heart of downtown Loveland, right off the bike trail. Now with me, I have the owner and the legend, of course, <laughs> Scott Gordon. Now his wife is actually an owner as well. Her name is Jamie. She's just not here today. Scott's with us today. How you doing, Scott? I'm doing great. And uh, yeah, Jamie's at the high school. She's, okay. a, she's a counselor at the high school. Counselor at the high school. Uh, yeah, yeah, so doing good. Awesome. Now, the reason we selected this place for our next Food Guru article is because it's old. It is super old. This building was built in 1905. I'm not that old. Okay, Scott's not old. <laughs> We'll just say that, right? <laughs> the building's very old. It was built in 1905, used to be a filling station for steamboats. Um, we also have a really cool, call it the Crusader, right? The yeah. train outside. That's actually was from 1921. Now it's been remodeled a little bit um, just so they could fit 36 people on uh, that passenger van or the passenger car. That way they can host parties, events, post COVID, right? During COVID, that wasn't happening, but we're gonna try to get that back on, uh, get that rocking and rolling again. Now, what I wanna start off with first is, Scott, tell us a little bit about your history in Loveland and your professional background. Well, I grew up in Loveland. Okay. Uh, we moved here in 1975, right. so I always was around Loveland. Um, this side of town, especially this building, uh, was just used, the, the city used it for storage, uh, for, for uh, the public works and everything. Um, so I don't remember it as a whole lot until right. I got to high school and then we used this building to build floats for the homecoming parade. Uh, the freshman class always got to use this building okay. uh, and that went on when my wife was a school teacher. Uh, they did it at that time and I came and I helped with one of the classes. It just brought back a lot of good memories. Um, and then the building was falling down. Uh, so it was condemned for about 15 years. Oh, okay. um, I didn't know that. The, the roof was caving in, the, you know, the bells right. were at risk. Uh, so I, I made a deal and I got the building in 2002. 2002. Uh, and it took me a little over a year to get it to get it open. Okay. Um, so, but just growing up in Loveland, graduated from Loveland High School. Uh, I went away to, you know, to college and, and played baseball and then off to the- Where was that at? Uh, Xavier University. Xavier, okay. Yep. Uh, and and then I uh, was drafted by the Blue Jays and went and played professional baseball for a while. I did not know that either. Uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, some great some great memories of uh, you know traveling in the minor leagues. Right. Long bus rides and you know just great camaraderie with yeah. with some lifelong friends. Now, what yeah. about your degree? What did you graduate with now? Uh, baseball, pretty much. Okay. Okay. No, no. I was curious no, because no, I'm like, what's your background yeah. here? No, uh, business management. Yes, so, perfect. So it turned it it, it worked out well. Right, um, right. And and then after baseball, I went into the Marine Corps. Okay. Uh, kind of, yeah, I was commissioned as a lieutenant. Uh, was promoted up to a captain. Um, obviously, the hardest thing I've ever done. Right. Uh, but the but the best thing that I've ever done. Right. Um, spent time in in Bosnia uh, during the Somalia conflict. Um, got wow. to, uh, yeah, my last tour of duty was at the Pentagon, uh, so, so had a lot of, oh a lot God. of good experiences there, uh, and then always knew we would come back home. Right, right. Uh, so we came back to Loveland, and I was working in a, uh, working in a manufacturing plant, uh, down in Marymount. Okay. And driving by here all the time, and we're on the bike trail one day, and I, I mentioned to the, the then city manager, Tom Carroll, I was like, man, what a shame that that old building, I mean, that, that needs to be saved. Right. And he said to me, he's like, we've been looking for somebody to do something with that building for a long time. And I said, I'll, I'll do something. So it was the building that drew me okay. um, I, and, and not a history as a cook or a chef or anything. Um, was, I wanted to save the building. Right. So in the building to me, just it, it spoke, you know, pizza and beer. Right. You know, an old fire station, like you said, it was originally for the railroad and the, and the brick ovens. There weren't any in Cincinnati at that time. Right. Uh, so we we were able to, to bring in a brick oven in here uh, and, and made a made a good pizza and beer. And still to this day, um, you know, we're we're almost 20 years. Uh, it's we're 60 percent pizza and beer. You oh know, the, the brick oven. I was going to ask how many years yeah. and I'm like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so the brick oven pizzas, uh, we have, we pride ourselves, we have 24 beers on tap, 
um, and we try to get as many of the local breweries as we can. Right. Uh, so right now I think we have 12 local breweries, you know, right, Rheingeist, Mad Tree, Cartridge, uh, you know, um, we obviously we love Narrow Path. Um, they just don't don't do things outside of their place. Right, right. Uh, but we we love to hey take pizza, go go e go path. eat it over there at Narrow Path. Right. Um, so it's just it, it's been a been a fun progress. Your life story is probably the most interesting I've heard. I did not know about the Blue Jays because you know I'm a former athlete too. That's awesome. Did not know about the Marine Corps. Did not know about any of this, so that's uh, that's awesome that the community now knows like how much you've given in uh, your life, seriously, and not necessarily received. So, thank you for that. Um, now you've already talked about your first encounter with the works and everything that went down. Restaurant business, you said, I didn't have a whole lot of experience with the restaurant business. Now, why? Why the restaurant business? I mean, you could have probably done anything in here. Why was it the restaurant business that kind of drew yeah. you in? And the building itself, I mean, it's pretty historic. Has there been any renovations or is it pretty oh, yeah. much intact? Oh, no, I've gone through uh, through three different uh, iterations of re renovations. Okay. Uh, the first one was me doing the work with my friends and neighbors, uh, my dad, my wife, you know, just just trying to get the place open. Right, right. Um, and then after we were open for a few years, then we brought in the Schnickies. Uh, <laughs> there's the yes. tie with the Schnickies yes. again. Yes. Uh, Steve and Mark Schnicky came and helped me and, and you know made the bathrooms really nice. Right. Uh, put in the ceiling. Um, you know, did a lot of things that, that just upgraded the place quite right. a bit. Right, right. Uh, and then I brought the train car in. Yes. Um, like we were talking, the history of Loveland is it's where the the railroads intersect and yes. and i have told the story so many times of why this building is here it was a you know the water filling station right. for the steam locomotives right um so to add seating we could have just put another bay in and you know called it a day but i thought okay hey get in the train car which i searched and searched and searched and found finally found that one at gettysburg pennsylvania Holy. Um, yeah, yeah. Where, how did you how did you do the searching? Just kind of Googling well, or? No, um, you can't find train cars by Googling. That's what I was going to say. Uh, yeah. How the heck? So there's there's a group in Cincinnati, the uh, the Greater Cincinnati um, Railway Railroad Museum. Okay. Right, and they're at, <laughs> and uh, and they helped me find. So when I told them what I was looking for, they're like, Oh, yeah. We, we can help you find if you're willing to put the time and money right. into, into rehabbing it. Right. Um, so this was a rust bucket. There was no glass in it. It was just rusted away. Uh, it, it looked like a bomb had gone off on it. Right. Um, and, and there were two of them in Gettysburg, actually, two sister cars. This one's the Crusader, which we have renamed the T.R. McManus af okay. after my wife's grandfather, okay. uh, who was an engineer on, on these tracks. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah. So you have a long history in Loveland. Yeah. Long yes. history. Yes. Yeah. And TR, what's that stand for? Was that his name? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now now with that, Gettysburg, Virginia. What oh, wow. Yeah. So is it going to be available in the up and coming future? I did read online that you could do events, parties, oh, yeah. shoot, bachelorette parties, who knows? Um, will that be available eventually? Uh, absolutely. It it's even been available during COVID. Okay. For for just private dining. Absolutely. So you have a you know a family of four, they could go up there and sit in it, and they'd have it all to themselves. Okay. Uh, so now we can have up to ten people in there. As the restrictions loosen up, then we can open it wide open. But we've just been, if you want to use it, you just call up. Hey, is it available at six o'clock? Yeah, you you got it for your own private use. And how historical is that? 1921. Yes, they renovated it a little bit, but from 1921. That's just yeah. unbelievable. Now, with that, I really want to dive into the work's mission, mm -hmm. your statement. I know, for one, that you have been involved in so many charities. Um, the most recent one, Darnell Parker, you were all about that. You hosted a Rolling Monday. Um, so what is your mission statement for the restaurant? And honestly, how did you go about selecting the staff to represent that mission statement? Well, when we first opened, like we said, right. um, it, you know, we were, you had Tequila Jacks and then Paxson's turned it into a family friendly place. Now, what would you say, you know, and obviously it changes according to the season, according mm -hmm. to swimsuit season, you know, <laughs> um, what would you say that customers coming in, guests, 
What do they order most often? I know you do sandwiches, salads, calzones as well. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would say, wow, that's on the literally on every ticket? Um, it, you know, we are 60% pizza and beer, Yes. right? Um, but we do have some delicious, like you said, the house special salad uh, is, a, is a great combination with diced apples and mandarin oranges with the basil vinaigrette dressing. Yes. So it's a nice light, um, you know, just good sandwich. Uh, or if you're just feeling guilty and you want that big burger, um, you, you know, we have a good burger. Right. So my brother-in-law, Sean, has been here since day one also, uh, and he's a great chef, and, and he's, he'll come up with stuff all the time. Uh, so I, there isn't that one, you know, yeah. just one thing that's like, oh, you know, right. we've, we've played with the menu over the last couple of years to kind of get it where, okay, we don't have anything that nobody wants. You know the things that people love. Right. All right, try to try to keep that uh, keep that as constant as we can. Right, right. Now I'll tell you. Obviously, y'all know because I sound like a broken record. I'm vegan. We you all know, how, know that. You know how I knew that? How'd you know? Because you told me. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> but I love the fried green beans. If you haven't had them, like you're missing out. They are the most delicious things I've ever had. I pair it with the vegetable salad typically, obviously no cheese. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll go for the veggie pasta because those artichokes, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Have you had any of those? Oh yeah, have yeah. I had any? Well, I don't know. I have to I'll try everything. You, how you like vegetables? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the green beans, I mean, seriously. It, yeah, that is, Ooh. yes. I haven't yeah. seen those anywhere else but here. No, they're, um, they are deep fried. Yeah. So it's not necessarily the yeah. healthiest, yeah, they, um, they but healthy. God, they're good. They are yeah. so good. <laughs> I agree with you there. Now, and um, the deep fried mac and cheese is pretty darn good too. Mac and cheese, deep fried, there oh, you go. Deep yeah. fried mac and cheese too, yeah. if you're feeling a yeah. cheat day, guys. Yeah. Um, now with that, let's talk a little bit. I, I know you said, well, I think I read online that you're able to cater events with the wood the wood we, fire ovens we is have, that we have a mobile a mobile wood fired oven okay. uh, that we do graduation parties uh festival style eating Love that. Um, it, it is a, just a great addition to a party right uh, we do limited amounts um, because it's either myself or sean or one of our right. the kitchen guys uh that that run that um so we try to only do one a week right, right. um but you know, it's a it's a great uh, great addition for. Oh yeah. So guys, that is an option. You just got to let them know way in advance, of course. <laughs> well, not way in advance, but at least a couple weeks, I'd say. Yeah. You know, um, it would be a cool party favor, I would say. I'm um, having a wood a wood fire oven with pizza and we whatnot. Just, we just did the first wedding over at Loveland Landing. Okay. Uh, last week. Uh, uh, the Copeland we, wedding. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. Yes, we yeah. did the midnight snack for their for their wedding. And what does that entail? Uh, we had baked pretzels, pizzas. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, it was that a lot of fun. Awesome. That is yeah. so awesome. I kind of want to rent one now. <laughs> now, um, with that, I do want to uh, hit on a couple more things. Do you have any particular special memories about the place since you've been open? You know, whether it's with a staff member, with your family, with a customer, is there anything that sticks out that you'll never forget? Well, the, the early years, obviously, are, are going to be big ones. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. And probably my 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 a couple memories are so we didn't have any children uh when we when we started this and that was that was kind of my argument uh to my wife was hey let's sink everything we have into this building and try to give it a go if we lose everything we go back and live in an apartment we don't have any kids you know apartment living is great it right is, yeah. yeah so a year to the day almost yeah. um my daughter was born so Right when we had first started opened, and of course you're working all day, all night, and you know how that goes. Uh, I came home, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, my wife is still up, and she's sitting there and she said, Scott, you might want to sit down. I was like, you know, of course your, your first thought is something yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, and she says, I'm pregnant. And I was like, well, how, how did that happen? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's I mean, not an obvious answer. <laughs> it, it, no. Um, so that uh, that memory right there was, it, and it changed everything. It went to okay, we're just having fun, we're we're playing around, playing playing restaurant. Right. Uh, to oh shit, now this has to work. Right. Right. right, right. And and thankfully, um, you, you know, it has worked through the years. Um, you know, we've got a great community that that we live here with, and right. and stuff. Uh, we were the only places in town. 
right? Because we would drive to Montgomery, or you know, Deerfield didn't even have restaurants up, up in there. Right. Uh, Not yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of when we got started. When you were asking why do a restaurant, right. you know, that's kind of what that. Well, we need. We didn't have a family-friendly place in Loveland. There Correct. had been several that had that had come and gone. Um, so, getting it there. And as far as mission statement and. You know, obviously you have this cool building, oh, right? Yeah. And, and I've said it before, it's all about the building. Right. I, I just, I feel honored to be the caretaker of the building right now, right? So at some point, I hope to pass it along to somebody else to take care of the building. Right. Um, and the restaurant, you know, what better place than to have your friends and family gather, you know, after a ball game, you know, Amen. you come down here and you, and you, have, a, you have a bite to eat. Um, you know, win, lose, or draw, you still got to eat. Right. right. So, Amen I mean, you've had you've had some some good and bad events and yay. it, it happens. Right. 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 To the best you either celebrate or you regroup. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's been that through the through the beginning. And as far as our staff goes, uh, we're lucky enough. We have some of the same staff that we started with. Yeah, I was going to say veterans, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tasha, who's here today, uh -huh. um, she runs the place for me now. How long? Uh, she's been here since day one. Since 2002, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and actually, we're getting ready to celebrate her wedding. She's getting she's oh, getting married. So you've seen her grow up. Uh, to Chris Danslow, who also works here. Okay. Uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna have a big party down here. So I love that. Yeah. Now I, I do want to touch on something that I found on your website that really called to me. That's why I asked about your mission statement. Mm -hmm. One of a kind food, one of a kind dining location, and one of a kind experience. That's awesome. I love that mission statement. Yeah. Would you say that's pretty much the vibe you're trying to represent at all times? Whether we're trying to or not, that's right. just what it is. It's just what it is. Right? There's something unique about Loveland. Right. And there always has. Even back in the, in the late 70s and early 80s when I grew up, it, we were more of a farm, country, a farm community. Right. But Loveland was still kind of unique. Yes. Uh, we've changed a lot, uh, but we're still unique. Uh, the bike trail and the river and you know there's many sides to love them that a lot of people don't know um, because they may just live in one part of it right. uh, so once you get out you know the life food pantry uh, it, you know the number of, of great organizations we have here in Loveland cancer-free kids yes um, that, that that just have just like-minded people I think maybe it's in the name love you know with Loveland be. Um, you know, my mom was a Valentine's lady. She passed away a couple years ago. Really? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so just all those things come together and you can't help but, but think there's more to it than just, you know, being here, having a job, making a living yep. and going through life. Right. Yes. So, so when, when somebody like, like coach Parker, you know, and not that we raised a ton of money, right. um, but we, I think we raised spirits, you know, not just his, mm. oh my God. Um, so his his players and his and fiance. parents and his fiance, yep. I mean, and and us. Yep. I mean, you and I. You met him for uh, the first time that day. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like I've known him for a long time because my nephew played for him yeah. years ago. Um, uh, so just things like that. It's, I think that's what life's about. I um, agree. So I if, agree. If I can be a small part of that, then I'm then I'm happy to do it. There you go, Loveland. You heard that. So come on over <laughs> if you're trying to make a difference with Scott here. Um, now, okay. Let's dive into the menu. Let's dive into the food. Let's yeah. dive into the pizza. So I know you have the wood, uh, the the wood firing brick oven back there. Yeah. One of the first ones in this area, mm -hmm. of course. Um, let's talk about the menu. What's some of the most popular items? What are some of your favorites? And then I'll let you know what my favorites are too. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I I have two favorites. Okay. Uh, it depends on the day. One is the kamish. Uh, which is named after my dad. I was wondering that. Uh, so with the last name Gordon, growing up, my dad, he was an FBI agent. Uh, so of course with Batman, you know, he was Commissioner Gordon, yes. right? So his nickname was forever the commish. Uh, his favorite pizza, sausage and pepperoni. So we have the commish on the, on the menu. Okay. And it is, it, it's, it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, but probably the simplest, uh, the margarita pizza, uh, I love as well. So I go back and forth between those. Um, but I got to tell you, the last probably couple years, we do a cauliflower crust yes. uh, that we find a pretty good one. Uh, and we do a breakfast pizza on that cauliflower crust. Ooh. I've had it for lunch every Monday with my dad um, for the last couple years. And it is. It, what all is on that? 
Uh, well, there's there's scrambled scrambled eggs. Uh -huh. uh, we put cheese as the base, so there's no sauce. Okay. Uh, so there's cheese as the base, scrambled eggs, whatever toppings you like. I like green peppers, banana peppers. Sweet story. Yeah. I love that. Seriously. And then if you fast forward a couple years, you know, I was I think I was bartending one night and uh, and and get a get a phone call, you know, like at eight o'clock, right in the middle of the dinner rush, and and my wife says, "You got to get home right now." Right. And so, of course, your mind goes to this is something bad. Right. So I just left. I don't even think I told anybody I was leaving. But the staff just picked it up. Oh, yeah, of they, course. That's when I realized they don't need me here yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, so I ran home, and it was because my daughter was taking her first steps. So luckily, I, I didn't miss that. Uh, and, and I think at that point, I realized, you know what? I'm going to make sure I don't miss anything that goes on. Ball games, uh, you know, things like that. Um, she's an equestrian rider, oh. uh, so I, I get the chance to go to all of her, of her events and take her to practice. And yeah. um, so I, there's some great memories. Yeah, yeah. And, those, and those are, especially since they're family oriented as well. Now, final question. I love this question because it really shows where your mind's headed for the future. Scott, in five to ten years, what are your goals? Where do you want to be? Where do you want the restaurant to be five to ten years? Well, not to sound like I, I've met goals, right. um, but I hope to be right where we are now. Right. Um, because I think I think we do a lot of good for a lot of people, um, and our staff. You know, we've got a great staff. We provide a way for them to earn a living. Through COVID, we didn't have to lay anybody off. Right. We were able to shift gears a, a little bit. Probably one of the only places. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful for that. Right. Um, and so five to 10 years, I hope we continue to be able to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy what I do. I'm lucky in that. Uh, and I think we have a cool place here for the community. So I, I hope that it, that it just continues on. And amen to that. And you, you guys heard it here. I mean, the works is that spot in Loveland where not only do you get great service, great food, great atmosphere, you also feel that special connection with Loveland because it's been here for so long and obviously the history is there. Scott, thank you so much for doing this interview. I know the community is going to love it. Thanks, Cassie. Anything else you want to say, Scott? No, thanks for coming out. Appreciate awesome, it. awesome. All right, Loveland, I'm the food guru. You heard it here. See you later.